here we have the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Dati Babahame. Stay with me, Mr. Daniel Bwala. Let's come to uh, Abuja studio with uh, uh, the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Thank you so much, and it's good to have you tonight on the program. Well, well, um, let me first and foremost, let's begin the conversation around your own view of the outcome of the presidential election. Sad, unfortunate, tragic. All promises that were made dashed, failed, hopes dashed. On a Wednesday before that Saturday, we attended the signing ceremony in which the INEC chairman so bravely spoke and in which uh, Mr. President also spoke we should have known better, we always know better. But when you are dealing with authority, you have, and you are a law abiding citizen, your only option is to continue to have hope. But we've been having hopes for eight years now. Promise after promise was uh, failed. They promised beavers will work on Wednesday. They switched it off on Saturday. They promised electronic transmission on Wednesday. They failed it on Saturday. Mr. President said all he could, but all we have to do is to look at their uh, antecedents and just come out and say the truth. These are people who just practically do not even know what they are pr promising. They promised better security for Nigeria. Eight years now have not been able to. Better economy, no. Uh, fight corruption, Nigeria is the most corrupt era for Nigeria now. And therefore, if they failed to deliver the credible elections that they promised, it should come as little wonder to us. However, they are still calling it a credible election, which reinforces my belief that, clinically speaking, they don't even know what they're doing. They just say things in the air, credibility, they have honor, they have zero honor, they say they have honor. They force people to say that they are leaving behind a legacy. What legacy are you leaving behind with all the poor state that Nigeria is in? That is my view. But let's keep that aside and go to what is really facing Nigeria now, if you would. Can I go ahead? Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, I'd like to just get one or two things off the table. Um, you mentioned this. It looks to me that you generalize the issues. But Nigerians would like to know uh, in what areas uh, that you have your disappointment about the process? Is it with INEC? Is it with the beavers? Did the beavers work or is it, was it the IREF? Because uh, a lot of people will say maybe the beavers worked, but the IREF, the transmission of results, uh, was uh, uh, the problem. Where do you think that the promises did not match the performance? The arrogant INEC chairman and the incompetent president of Nigeria I'm very, very sorry to say. Um, the chairman should not have engaged in what he did. At the height of administrative rascality and official arrogance, sneak in the hour of 4 a.m., arrogate himself the power to um, interpret a section of the Constitution that needs no interpretation. Section 134 comes already interpreted, and recklessly proceeds to declare and issue a certificate of return. And our dear Mr. President, who is probably paying back a promise that Tinubu extracted from him way back in 2014, when they added their money and their votes for him to become president of Nigeria way back then? And now they reminded him, you promised to give it back to us. And he has no choice than Maybe, well, they promised, okay, give it to them. He could not stand for righteousness. And it is clear, with this uh, president, anything can go, and you can give it a different name. These are the places I'm disappointed in. But I really, really want us to come to what is facing Nigeria now, if you may. Absolutely. Let's go ahead. And, uh, but of course, uh, there are your, two, your, your party, there are two, just for a moment, mm -hmm. your party had gone to court petitioning the outcome of that election. What are your expectations? And I'm asking this because your party came third. 
So in that sense, what are the hopes and aspirations of your party and your principal and yourself? What do you think will come out of that election? What are your prayers? It's good we always um, finish qualifying what we're saying. When you say we came third, we came third according to the results released by INEC, yes. In reality, we came first uh, with the data, with the collated results on IREV and uh, with our agents and everything that we have. Have you collated that? We on have. We, yes. You've tabulated we have, yeah, it? Yes, yes. What you are know, the figures telling you? We, we, came, we won the election. Uh, I Clearly. declared six million plus for yes, you. Yes, but and, we, uh, we the, got the, the highest number of votes. By how many votes? Uh, it's in the region of eight million. But when the lawyers are handling that, I don't want to give a figure right now. We came for so just to correct you, whatever we say is good, we fully uh, cleared. Yes, we've gone to court and the lawyers are handling it. Let me, what is facing Nigeria now? Nigeria is officially in a state of constitutional crisis. We are not realizing that yet. What do you mean and by that? Thank you. A certificate of return has been issued to a so-called president-elect unconstitutionally. There are therefore two meanings, two interpretations, and two understandings of the declaration made. One is that one by INEC. One is that one of the people. When I said of the people is whoever can read section 134 of the constitution and take a position, then we are entitled to our own view of what crisis is facing Nigeria now. The certificate of return issued to al Haji Tinumbu is a dud certificate. It is one certificate that breaches the provisions of section 134. Therefore, the requirements to be declared as president-elect have not been met by Tinubu Shetima ticket. The declaration, therefore, as it stands now, as far as the people of Nigeria who choose to adopt the literal, clear, interpreted meaning of Section 134 is concerned, there is really no president elect. All right. So let's in let's Nigeria. Cla yeah, let's clarify. Yes. So Section 134 suggests and uh, puts to Nigeria. Does not suggest, provides. Yeah, provides yeah. what Nigerians should think about when they are electing a leader and, and the office of the president, and he talks about... No, showing you're wrong. You're wrong. It's not what they should say when they are electing a leader. Section 134 stipulates who to be declared an issued certificate of return. It is only that candidate that has scored the uh, highest number of votes and at least 25% in uh, each, in at least two thirds percent, two, two -third of the states of the federation and the federal capital territory. Right. Remember, so, I thought you were going to say something different from what I each, was going to read. No, no, no. Each <laughs> and now it is very clear. Tinumbu does not have 25% in the FCT. We denied him. We got 61%. Atiku does not have 25% uh, in the FCT. We denied both of them. By the clear, unambiguous provision of the Nigerian constitution, which must not be breached, Tinimbu has not satisfied the requirement to be declared president-elect. Accordingly, yeah. there is no president-elect for Nigeria now. I repeat, accordingly, there is no president-elect for Nigeria at the moment because the declared one violates the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I know what I'm saying. The constitution is there in your presence is available. Everybody is reading it as I speak. I'm not therefore behaving illegally or unconstitutionally. To the contrary, I am 
supporting constitutionality, it is in fact better for the powers that be to go and create additional 6% out of thin air and rig it back to Tinubu and therefore swear him in on 25% than to go ahead and take the risk of swearing in a so-called president-elect that has not met the constitutional requirement. Interesting. This conversation, that, I mean, what you there is started a, saying, just okay. for a moment, mm -hmm. was one conversation I had with Mr. Olisa Bakuba yes. a few months ago when yes. it was one of those who raised it and said, I need to come out to explain to Nigerians this second part of the provision of the Section 134 of the Constitution about the two th uh, 25 percent into third, two third of 36 dead is 24. Good. Plus the FCT, whether or not if you meet that of the two third, uh, 25 percent of two third of the of the state, which is 24. But if you fail to meet the FCT, what happens? That it was one major issue which is raised. Well, for the benefit of our viewers, let me just read quickly yes, thank you. what Section 134 says. And it says, a candidate for an election to the office of the president shall be deemed to have been duly elected, where there being only two candidates for the election, he has a majority of votes cast at the election. That is the first provision. Then he has not less than one quarter of the votes cast at the election in each of the least two thirds of all the states in the federation and the federal capital territory abuja that is a second uh, provision can i comment go ahead please this document you read is not a puzzle it is in english all levels that you wrote and i wrote and the justices and everybody that is a candidate wrote it is law the law is not a game for politicians to play this document is not available for uh, Yakubu to interpret that day. It is there for him to follow. The English is very clear. These are fundamental provisions of the uh, Constitution. They come already interpreted. You cannot take a gun, shoot somebody, and then ask the family to go and get interpretation that you only fired your weapon and then it killed him no this constitution is more than abundantly clear it says and show you know the meaning of and we know the meaning of and there is no justice beyond what is simplicity simplicity is justice simplicity is wisdom simplicity is knowledge all right so that is an interpretation you, which you listen, are given listen the, listen listen no 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 because there are other there people is a who have universal argued, there is so, a universal there are other people who have argued differently go ahead and when Bolatinobu was declared, he has a supporter. A lot of people were happy that he won the election. There were 38% uh, uh, of the votes cast were given to him. And those people are Nigerians by also. INEC, by INEC, I told you to be qualifying what you said, please. By INEC. But, but that is what has been presented officially, except otherwise now you disputed. Have, now, well, now you have otherwise qualified disputed. It. Go ahead. Go ahead. You <laughs> if it's otherwise it. disputed, You've qualified that it. Go ahead. is what is fact that we know now. You have qualified it. Go ahead. So that is your interpretation of this provision, because some other people argue differently. Those who have argued differently ended up helping our case. Because they say that there is a certain ruling which says the FCT is a state. Good. FCT is a state. Where is the each of 25% for FCT? It is not there. That constitutional requirement has not been met. That certificate of return is null and void and cannot be sworn in as president. And let me tell you, the way they are going, disregarding the calls of the people, violating the constitution, let them even go ahead, even if they swear in Tony Bush Atima on 29th of May, they are swearing in an unconstitutional government, nothing will change it. Um, I am not a careless, reckless speaker. I am working with the constitution there, that document right you just read, I'm following it. And I dare to tell you that swearing in Tinimbo and Shetima is as good as swearing in the Nigerian army on 29th of May. If you swear in uh, people that have not 
satisfy the requirement, you have by so doing ended democracy. The crisis I'm telling you now is that this our democracy is going to end by the way we are going. This democracy is going to end on the 29th of May 2023. Please write it. Those are extreme, you know my those are extreme thoughts. I am uh, very, very happy to say it. No, you know no, my name. Are, you know, you yes, introduced me. Yeah. Listen, don't, don't stop those are, No, 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 I, I will, because it, those are extreme <laughs> thoughts. You know why? Because those, there, are, there are allowable language to be used on television, especially as it relates to our nation and the unity of this Put country. Put your question and let me answer you. Put no, your so question. I know what I'm saying. If, if there is an official... If you breach and, the con Constitution... But it, it, is it not left to the court to decide otherwise? This is already decided by the courts. But the authority in charge of election gave a declaration. Shall we, if, if you are afraid for some things, don't ask for them. I, I am not afraid. I will, no, then I'm I will as a you. citizen mm -hmm. of the country, mm -hmm. by the ethics and the guidelines of my profession, yes. live by it. Yes. What is lawful? And I hope that you're a lawful citizen I of the country. I am very, very And so whatever the stipulation one. of the law guides, that if you are aggrieved about something, you go to the court to seek redress, isn't it? This document is a product of the legal system. It has been signed into law by the uh, President, uh, uh, Commander-in-Chief, Federal Republic of Nigeria. I believe in this document. That is why I'm so lawful. That is why I'm so confident. And that is why I'm, however extreme it is, Shion, I am saying it on national TV. I don't like to take risks. I'm not taking any risks. Swearing in a ticket that has not met the constitutional requirements of the constitution okay is ending democracy quote me on it that's Repeat your it. that's your interpretation that is my it. interpretation and that is indeed a correct interpretation you cannot swear people who have not met the constitutional requirement you can't do that if you did it you have done something unlawful something unconstitutional and i'm repeating it Whoever does not meet the constitutional requirement must not, must never be sworn in. You said my name. If you like, I can say it again. I'm Dirty Baba Ahmed. I'm not taking risks with my safety and with my life. But I'm repeating, swear in anybody who does not meet the constitutional requirements of our country, you are engaging in an unconstitutional act. Mr. President, do not hold that inauguration. CJ and your, your, your lordship do not partake in unconstitutionality. I am taking these risks for the sake of my country. Yes, it is extreme and I'm saying it. It was more extreme for Yakubu to issue that uh, uh, certificate. It was reckless. That was, he is putting all our lives in danger, all of us. We're already at risk. So what is there again in me taking risks again? What have they not done against Nigeria? What have they not abused in Nigeria? Now they will take the constitution where it is clear, it says, and get 24. After that, and FCT. They fail to get it. They are going to swear this man in, and I should be afraid? I will not be. I am telling you that on the 29th of May 2023, swear in Tinimbu as this result is you have ended democracy, whoever you are. Do, I mean, you say you're a lawful citizen. I am. So, uh, the, the judiciary... The law is, in me is why I'm saying this. Yeah, so the judiciary is the hope of the masses, is the hope of the common man. And if you look at what decision your party, your principal and yourself are taking in going to the uh, presidential election petition, it does look that you believe in one thing, that the judiciary will work. Do you? I do. Um, what you asked me is a different form of what others have asked me, as in if I, have, if, or if I trust them. But listen, take these three things I'm going to tell you. The law is not a game for politicians to play. The Constitution is not a puzzle for candidates to toy around with. Justices, their lordships, are not in place for politicians to refer other politicians to. That is wrong. That is wrong. This is classically what is going on now. But do you have faith in the courts? I do not. Why so? There is a sitting Senate president who contested presidency.
and lost, and today he is declared senator. And the, the laws of Nigeria does not allow you to contest two offices. I was contesting governorship in Kaduna, but I withdrew before the contest. And that is why I was nominated as um, vice presidential candidate on this ticket. Electoral act violated. Every other act violated. Promises violated. Now they are inching to violate the constitution to the extent that they will even swear in a president who has not met the constitutional requirement. We should sit down and be afraid and not talk about it. No way. So if, if, you, say no way. You, if you say you do not believe in a court, so why did you proceed to the courts then? That, that is no reason for us not to go. Because I have said it many times, history is full of first times. There may be a first time that the court system will work. Remember, I have suffered from the legal system. My House of Reps, my Senate, and everything I accepted. Nothing I can do. And that's, that's to underscore the law in me. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm a law-promoting citizen. That is the more reason I keep telling you, I keep speaking in extreme ways. And I'm not violating your ethics. I am more ethical than many people who have been here before to come and tell lies because I'm speaking the truth. The Constitution says each of, that is 24, after that and, and you come and tell me that, go and get interpretation, this is an interpreted document. Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is an interpreted document. Let's get academic. If, for example, Section 134 had said that shall have scored 25% in two thirds and the FCT, and then you get a very popular candidate who now scores 100% of the states, and then the opponent goes to say, the constitution says two thirds of the states, and this man went to score in all the states, declare him invalid. That is where they are, they are just, they are, the justices, their lordships can say no. We hereby interpret it to mean this. But it has been so diligent, there is nothing left out there. 25% in each of at least two thirds of the states of the Federation, which are 36, and the FCT. Who has time to waste? Nobody has time to waste. You come and rig elections, bastardize the system, uh, then tell people to go for interpretation? No way. You think the election of 25th of February was rigged? It was rigged. What about uh, some of your candidates in the National Assembly who won their seats? There are at least six of them or so. Any of them who the rigged should be taken to the court and have it taken away. I'm talking of presidential election. Does he interpret? You think that the presidential election was, was rigged? It was rigged. Even the six million plus vote that you have, was it rigged also? It was not rigged. So that the lawful votes that you got? It was not rigged. So remember, you are talking of electoral matters. I'm talking of constitutional matters. So yeah, I'm asking the question because two if things. you say that the election was rigged. The election was rigged. So uh, It should have been stopped. Remember, we called for the, the, the coalition to stop. Don't forget that, Shio. Absolutely. But we the question I'm asking, stop. Listen. Mr. Dati, the question I'm asking, if you say the question, I mean, the election is rigged, you got 6 million votes. Yes. If you're going to court to challenge the vote, you'll be challenging we, based on the vote that you have. We got more than 6 million votes. And in the process, we cried out, stop this coalition, stop. The election did not hold. Election is made of four things. It is made up of the voting of lawful citizens exercising their civic responsibilities. Coalition according to the guidelines and the Electoral Act. Coalition, sorry, transmission of the results according to the guidelines and the Electoral Act, then collation according to the Electoral Act itself, and then declaration according to the Constitution. But the Electoral Act borrowed that section from the Constitution and applied it in there. After voting, all hell was let loose. What they promised us three days earlier on Wednesday was that there would be electronic 
transmission immediately from the polling units. And it is there in INEC guidelines and the Electoral Act that no collation shall be made without reference to the IREV. They were collating without reference to IREV. So we cried out, stop this, stop this. The election is already going bad. Stop it. They didn't. 4 a.m. has never happened in the history of Nigeria after adjourning without specifying the time. 4 a.m., a so-called INEC chairman sneaked to the uh, coalition center and announced the result and declared a winner. If you will now permit me, because I respect your rules so much, there's a word I wish to use. Who is a fool? I took your permission. No Nigerian is a fool. You cheat us this way and tell us, go and get interpretation, go to court. Nigerians are law-abiding, self-respecting, peace-loving citizens. Uh, you, have heard, you have heard about organized private sector. I have heard about organized crime. And in our petition, there is something that has to do with organized crime. Drug peddling, drug everything is the epitome of organized crime. In America's 90s, 1930s, there was Ben Seagal, a murderous individual who controlled the state. Only in the 1980s, um, I, I always oh my his, his name, Pablo Escobar, he threw a justice from a helicopter down to earth. Pablo Escobar. Now, recently, you have the case of uh, El Chapo in prison, but correcting. We have it written in black and white from a U.S. courthouse that someone somewhere once forfeited $460,000 and is now a president-elect in Nigeria, the world's greatest black nation. In the United States, Nigerians have the highest educated expatriates, and this is the best we can do. Let's bring on this conversation. I'd like to ask, it does look, from what uh, your opponents are saying, that you only believe in the courts if it's in your favor. Not true. Not true at all. Listen, the most important thing now is that it is not even in our own interest to stop the swearing-in of an unconstitutional government. And as far as we are concerned, you cannot swear in an unconstitutional government. Therefore, don't swear it in. It's not in our interest. And if you don't do that, we don't know what is going to happen. All right. Let do you understand? Get, yeah, let me so get you. Let, let we me get, are more yeah. after correctness. We are after the system working. All right. we're, after, we're after justice being served. Show, in case people don't know, who loves politics? It, it is a nightmare. Your job, the job you are doing is better than mine. Politics is not nice. We're not enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it for sure. Maybe Shetima Tunimbo are enjoying it. I'm not enjoying it. Oh, why did you go into all? it? Because it is a call of, uh, of duty. I need to protect my country. I need to protect the future of the generations coming up. Are you there is no hope future. In, are you losing hope in that? I am. With the kind of leaders coming up in Nigeria, I am losing hope. What would be your final thought tonight? There must never be an unconstitutional government sworn in in Nigeria. And this is just the beginning. I am saying it now. I've, it, let it be careless. Let it be reckless. Let it be extreme. It is the truth. It is there in that constitution we read. All right. What I'm saying, an unconstitutional government must never ever be sworn in because that is the end of democracy anywhere mr dati baba ahmed you have uh, your say and your views on this matter thank you so much indeed thank you i appreciate it thank you thank you